about my father's world all aboard the animal train. So this is recommended for ages two and three years old. It could be a more advanced two-year-old. They do have some activities here for younger twos, but if your child is ready to listen to stories, learn their colors, and just have a little bit more structured time, this is definitely a gentle and super sweet curriculum um, that can help introduce them to those concepts. So we use this for my youngest, who used it from ages about two to four years old. Now, why did it take us so long to get through this? Um, a big reason was that I had my older two kids moving through um, exploring countries and cultures. We were doing all sorts of things. So she was participating in a lot of the activities with the big kids. So this was just something that we designated for a couple of days a week. And it just allowed me to have that one-on-one -on -one time with her to target her skills and just to create some really, really sweet memories. So we both have the fondest memories of this curriculum. She was just looking through it right now and was saying, oh, I wanna do that all over again. It was so fun. And um, I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to do this. Um, if you're familiar with my channel, you know we've used My Father's World for many years and have just, learned so much all of us have i've just learned so much about discipling our children and pointing them to jesus and just understanding this special special time of childhood and how precious it is and how fleeting it is and just how to redeem that time with them and make the most of it so if you're interested in finding out more about this one i hope this will be helpful to you i hope it'll um give you the information you need to decide whether or not it could be a good fit for you and your family so this is the teacher's manual and it has everything you need in here there are recipes for simple little foods, there are recipes for um, Play-Doh and little activities that you'll create together. But basically it is structured on four pillars. So you have cleanup time and together time. You have story time, outdoor time, and then activity or surprise time. So we just put magnets on the back of these. These went on our refrigerator and we just put, put them all up there. And we started with the top one and she knew that that's what we were doing first and we take it off. And then at that point I might work with my bigger kids and um, older kids. And then we would go back and work. And so we kind of just broke up our day depending on what else we were doing. But these little cards really helped her see her progress and helped me just remember what it was that we still needed to target. Now, when it came to outside time, this was unstructured. So it was just a matter of getting outdoors, going for a nature walk, riding our bikes or scooters or tricycles, whatever it was that we wanted to do during that time. But it just reminded us how important this time was to get outside. And um, it was something she really looked forward to each day. Now, as far as the setup for everything else, all of that is in the teacher manual. So you can view samples of this on the website. I'll put the link below. But the way it was broken down was into, in 12 key components here. So there were 12 animals that we looked at or studied a little bit more. I think you can see them there. Most of them, there's more over here. There were 12 of them. And um, they also learned 12 colors, numbers, and then they also targeted those colors, virtues. And so you can see the virtues here. We started with love and obedience and patience all the way down. And so the spine for that was this book called First Virtues. I've shared this in the past. It was one of our favorites. It's written in rhyme. And it talks about each of those virtues with a sweet little animal. So here's the kitty learning about what the Bible has to say. This is about kindness. And then after the examples of what kindness is and showing you the kitty with his friends and all of that, then you get to see the Bible verse at the end where it's be kind to everyone, Second Timothy. So it connects it back to the Bible. Sweet, sweet book. Um, you read the stories over and over again throughout the course of those three weeks. It's three weeks per virtue and per animal and per color. So there's a number of things that the kids are doing during that time. There is repetition, and I know for me, I struggle with that. I like novelty. I want to do new things all the time. 
the children thrive on repetition. They love hearing those same stories over and over again. And so following the recommendations here in the curriculum really took me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but met my child right where she was and just gave her those joy-filled experiences that I wouldn't have had otherwise. I would have kind of zoomed through these stories and we would have been done. And this just allowed us to really embrace those concepts. So this was one of the spines. We also had the preschoolers Bible. Now you can see this is very well loved and actually taped together because it's fallen apart a few times on us, but it's super duper short. I have a little bit more of a flip through in, um, my preschool Bible resources. So I'll link that below if you want to check it out a little bit more so, but it had just a couple of pages per story, about two to three, and then um, some questions to ask or just to discuss further. So um, the curriculum took us through this. It took us through the virtues, and then we just had some storybooks to go through. So I have most of them here. My daughter still loves, loves, loves these books. So they are all over the house. Um, I had to pull these together, but we had Old MacDonald had a farm, the fuzzy duckling, baby animals. This was a treasury, um, Margaret Wise Brown treasury. So it has a few different stories in there, just beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And oh my goodness, this was a favorite here. A big treasury of little animals. So it has the story of the little duck, the little kitten, the little lamb, the little pig, puppy, and rabbit all in there. And super duper fun. Lots of little pictures and what it was like to get those animals as pets and the children's experiences with it. And kids just love this book. So this is also falling apart a little bit. So those are just some of the stories that we did during what was called story time. And I will pull that up here. So this is this little agenda card, story time. We would read from these books and sometimes we would do poetry. So that was the other thing that this curriculum had. It had a poem or two or three per animal and we did some finger plays, acting out, just all of that imaginative play that kids absolutely love um, was built into the poetry part of the curriculum. So we enjoyed the poems. And these were part of the student sheets. And then of course the books that came with the curriculum as a set. The other thing we talked about was, um, or what we did was the together time. So holding that up, together time. So during together time was when I introduced the lesson or the virtue, or we did something together, a craft, a coloring sheet. Sometimes it was a recipe, a simple little recipe that we could do together. And we basically worked through the student sheets also during that time. So this is just an example of a student sheet. And this has to do with love because that was the first virtue. And it says, God loves us so, and we had to plug in our names, dad, mom, siblings, love God and others. And so each day we added to this little sheet right here and you'll see we were talking about the rabbit so she cut it out and plugged it in there we were learning the color red and it's on there so i'm gonna stick that back on she had to color the hearts and so forth and then we had to show love to somebody and record it here and it says we showed love to daddy by cleaning up and giving him a present so it captured our journey with learning these virtues and applying these virtues and so we had one of those sheets for every single one. So just as another example, here's the ducky with the yellow. And then in addition to this, there were these little activities. So we would cut these out. It gave her some cutting practice. Sometimes the activity was color related. So these would go on the floor and we'd play music. And so the music that it recommended was this one. It came with it, Sing for Joy, and it has some little nursery rhymes and things like that, um, little Bible songs. And then when the music would stop, for example, she'd have to go find the green circles or the blue ones. And so it was based on colors. So we had all these different cards. We cut them out. Sometimes we were counting this, the little animals. 
sometimes we were um, learning left and right or up and down, whatever it was that we were doing, we had these little cutouts per unit that we would use um, for these different games that she was able to do. She also had these little um, cutouts for each animal where we'd write the verses and we actually clipped those up on string with little clothespins. So that was super fun. We made popsicles, we made creamsicles at one point, we made Play-Doh, red Play-Doh, and all sorts of things. Um, the curriculum also comes with these little cookie cutters for each animal. So then we would also, you know, cut them out and play with it. And she just did a lot of fun hands-on activities that were just engaging for her. Um, it also comes with these big watercolor paints. So we used all of those, but there were coloring pages. I'm gonna see if I can find some examples. They kind of ended up in her box everywhere. Um, but there were coloring pages that she painted with her paints and it was just a whole lot of fun. There were also songs that we did. So the songs were a part of the games, but they were also things that we did with finger play sometimes. And we would just sing them throughout the week. Now, after together time, that just was, you know, anywhere from 10, 20 minutes or so, then we would have, oh, there it is, surprise time. So surprise time was the activity time, and this was more independent play, but I loved it because it was something um, specific that she could do. And while she was over there playing and engaged in that, in that imaginative play, I was able to work with my older kids. And so there was a good balance on those days. Now, the way they structured it was they gave you these little cards with numbers on them. And so I added these double sticky tape things and I would literally put it like on the box of things. And so there were five boxes with five numbers. It doesn't stick anymore, I took them all off, but there were five of them and I put them away in the, in the closet. These were only things that she could use on that day. So it just made it more exciting. And it was something that I could leave as is for about the whole month or the whole unit before I had to switch it out and create that novelty and new experience. So after that point, I had my five boxes. She would just draw from the bag and then whatever number she pulled out, that was the box that we did that day. And so then I would just kind of push it over so that by the end of the week, she'd hit all five or two weeks in our case. Um, but she had a good variety of activities to do. So they provided some examples of these activities with the curriculum set. This was one of them, the Numbers Express. And honestly, guys, I just put this one away. They loved, loved, loved this set. Um, it was for counting. So you have these little pegs and you push them into here to count to five. And then also this is a part of the puzzle that they have to plug in. And then they put the whole thing together like this. So it was a super fun set. These are the pegs. So honestly, they would build all sorts of things with these, stack them up as high as they could and just imagine imagine it was a train and had all sorts of fun with it so this is one of the ones that comes with the my father's world package if you choose to go that route um, another one were the was the discovery blocks so these are them they are so pricey now but i think if you get it as part of the set it's still a good deal and they are so worth it i still have my kids playing with these years later. Um, my older ones, or not the oldest, but they played with them for a very, very long time. They're colorful and they just are beautiful blocks, high quality. You build with these, you imagine with these, they made palaces, castles, and all sorts of stuff. But it does have this for vis visual discrimination activities. And so in this little curriculum set, they start off really simply and they just place them on there to recreate it or you can have them recreate it on the side or underneath it and then it gets to more complex you can see that there and um, things that they're building and then by the end they're doing things like this kind of a dog or sunset and so forth so this was fun this was one of our surprise time things and i would just flag where we were in the book and I'd leave it out. And so she'd start with building those first two or three um, activities from here. And then she'd take off with it. After that, it was just free for all, play, have fun. And um, we had those little learning resources, block people. And oh my goodness, 
love, love, love those. They just would build their homes and their beds and they would play, play, play. And it was just so much fun. So this was another activity time box. And then I have purchased just different um, STEM projects and things like that from my father's world um, before this curriculum was made. So I bought these things for my middle child and um, when they started boxing it, well, I already had a lot of these things. So I just wanted to share them with you. These are wedges, and a great fun activity where they do the visual discrimination um, cards and build things and then create their own structures. Um, these are a favorite. I will link them below if you're interested. But they have the shape, so they're shape puzzles. They're also lacing activities here. They're color coded so you can change the colors. But honestly, guys, after we did some of the matching and things, these just became cookies. And they played, they played restaurant and all sorts of fun stuff. So pies, cakes, and things like that. So lots of fun. Again, I would just put them in these bins and we'd number them and, <laughs> and we would have them there to play. And then the last thing I was going to share, we have these cookie cutters, right? So I created sensory bins. And so I just put in everything for molding and things like that in here. So it's easy to grab and go. And I have a whole video on our sensory bins and ideas and activities for that. So I'm going to also link that just in case you're interested in getting some inspiration of what can go in those sensory bins and how to make it easy to implement because I need it easy. I had two older kids that I was trying to shuffle through their activities and I needed something that I could grab and go. So that video is all about how to make that happen and how to put together something like this that is easy to put together and, um, and use each time you need it. So that is that. But other than all that, we did have a binder. I've since taken everything out of our binder and just kind of stapled it like this for safekeeping. We have this in her little um, box, her little bin with all her school materials. Another thing I wanted to share with you is in the back of the book are some ideas for two-year-olds. If your child is still not ready for this, there's some great um, inspiration in the back. There are the lyrics to all the songs that you'll be listening to. They also have the animal patterns for the Bible verses and crafts that you can make a copy of. But you guys, my favorite part of this and every single My Father's World manual is the book list. So in the very back, by unit, for example, you have the book list for rabbits. So for unit one, you have all the books on rabbits, picture books, fiction books, activity books, just all sorts of fun books with a little synopsis on each one to see if that's something you want to look into further. They have books on colors. For unit two, there are books on bears. Unit three is on ducks and so forth. So love the book list. And then what they did at the very end was they put all the activities together at the end with a supply list. So you could, you know, make a copy, cut out that card, and you knew at the beginning of that unit, unit, excuse me, you'd have time to put together those supplies to prepare for that snack or that activity that you'd be doing. So just thought I'd throw that in before I forget. And it was sweet, guys. I loved it. Um, no complaints. We made it work for us. It provided just enough, um, how do I put it, structure that we needed. I know there's so much out there about don't do stuff with preschool kids and, you know, let them just play. And we did. But you know what? When we also spent a little bit of time doing some formal learning like this, it inspired more of that play. It inspired more of that creativity. It inspired more of that love for nature. And then it inspired that love for books and reading. And um, these books, like I said, are still our favorites. So that was our experience. Again, it took us a couple years to get through it all and um, we just made it work for us. And that's that's what's so good about homeschooling is that you can create what works for you in your family and follow the Lord's leading every step of the way. So hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed this overview. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It's an easy way to support my channel and I will see you here next time.